It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback is day of the week. Ha! It's a very special Kitten Feedback Friday, right? Right, Princess Zelda? Come here. Come here, come say hi to the peoples. Ah, I'm attacking your belly. Okay, here we go. Look, Kitten! Kitten! This is, you are Zelda, right? This would be... Oh no, you're Shadow. I'm sorry, Shadow. That's why you were looking at me crazy. Shadow's the boy, Zelda's the girl, and Shadow has a little white patch right on his little chin. Yes, isn't he adorable? He's so cute. He looks so mad right now. I decided to show kittens this week because, first of all, let's make them like me instantly. Ha ho. Mmm, nauseous. I decided to show cats today because a lot of the comments this week were a garbage fire. And part of it was the subject matter. Certain things mean that people are unable to conduct themselves like grown-ups. Kitten! Um, and this is really disappointing, I admit. I gave people the benefit of the doubt especially on that message to anti-feminist video. And for my trouble, I got a lot of name calling, a lot of people calling me an idiot. One person, apparently speaking for a very prominent anti-feminist, called me a retard. Now, this doesn't surprise me because this is someone who I will not um, talk to in a public debate until they apologize for previous personal attacks. And boy, am I glad I stuck to my guns on this one. Unacceptable. Attack the ideas, not the people. And my whole point is we shouldn't have to attack at all. We should be able to have conversations about things without attacks. Right, Midna? Right. Midna's cute. Yeah. The reason she's called Midna, you see she's got the white tummy. And then she's got these little patterns on her back. And you still have some of the deworming medicine on from this morning. But there was one comment that even though they accused me of straw manning and were snarky as anything, at least asked some questions, at least made a point instead of just name calling, going, no, you're wrong. That's not what feminism is about. No, you're wrong. That's not what MRM is about. No, you're wrong. Give me data. To paraphrase Sherlock Holmes, I can't make bricks without clay. You just go, no, you're wrong. You're idiotic. Learn your facts. I can't have a discussion like that. I can't. This is all about a dialogue, and you guys had a chance, and for the vast majority, you blew it. And so when people don't understand, people don't understand why I don't debate anti-feminists, or why I don't do this, or I don't do that, come back to this video. And this is why. Or look at the comments when I tried to say, look, I'm appealing to your logic here, not your feels. And a lot of people responded with feels. One person tell me to stop calling myself feminist. I'm women's rights advocates. Any anti-feminists who aren't totally full of shit are on the sides of women's rights. It's purely the tainted feminist movement we oppose. Why are we afraid of words? Why does it matter what I call myself? Another person said, Leanna doesn't seem to get just how big this problem has become. A fair point can be made about dismissing someone's ideas just because of their label, but that's due to extremists like a bunch of people I'm not going to name. That people like me aren't the silent majority, they're an increasingly insignificant minority in an increasingly bigoted and regressive movement. Um, maybe among gaming and maybe among tech, but the broader populist feminist movement, guys, who has more knowledge? about this. Me, who's involved with it, and actually talks to people, and actually engages with people, or you guys, who have only seen the worst of the worst of Tumblr. You're gonna argue me about things like that? Prove your case. The internet is not the real world. It is not mainstream, and people are saying that certain people they don't like are making policy decisions. Jessica Valenti does not make policy decisions, guys. She's an op-ed writer. You know how much power op-ed writers have? Zip. Zero. Trust me. I've done it. People swearing at each other. People talking about Jezebel. Again, not mainstream. It's an internet site. A lot of people straw man, straw man, straw man, straw man. I provided facts. Who's the straw man? What is the straw man? 
say it, you just going straw man without explaining why you claim it's a straw man argument is a straw man argument. You guys are better than this. And I have kittens. Right, Link? Right. Mm -hmm. Link, very cute. Okay, back to finding this comment. People saying that Lena Dunham has the ear of Hillary Clinton. I, I understand why people say that. Like I said, I understand some of the concerns about Lena Dunham, but guys, Lena Dunham does not really have the ear of Hillary Clinton, okay? She probably gives money to her campaign, but so do a lot of other people. And in, in government right now, the, you know, women's rights advocates are just um, fighting to not have Roe versus Wade overturned. Like, you're you're arguing things that's a federal level that are actually states' rights, and then you're arguing things that are states' rights that actually aren't. They're contract law. Also, kitten! It's at the point in these comments, uh, I don't know if people are yelling at me or yelling at each other. Here's the list of mainstream sources that people claim are radical feminist. Sarkeesian. Niche. Video games are a niche, according according to, to media. Lacey Green. Internet. Jessica Valenti. Okay. Mainstream, but again, op-ed writer. Lindy West. Don't even know who this is. Marcotte. I think you mean Amanda Marcotte, which is, I think, writes for Slate. Again, website. Penny. Don't, don't know. Penny what? Salon. Website. BuzzFeed. Website. Vox. Website. Vice. Vice is not mainstream. The Guardian, okay, getting there. Mike Wired, Wired is a, is a tech magazine. The Mary Sue website, Everyday Feminism, way out there website. Half the damn game trust, niche again. Every rag that jumps on a sexism culture, and, and then a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe one of those. By mainstream, I mean the New York Times. And yes, it does have some feminist writing, but... It's not to the level of The Guardian, all right? Mainstream means something that my mother would read. Kitten! The argument over whether someone is mainstream or not misses my greater point. Talk about a straw man argument. My point was, if, you're, if you oppose these people, don't give them more power. What is the narrative of Anita Sarkeesian? She is horribly attacked online. People who are going after online have made her. You don't like it? You think it's a bigger deal than I do? Stop doing it. The MRA camp isn't fighting for psychological support in male-dominated fields because every MRA believes the same thing about all things. I'm... I'm, I'm immediately on board with, with the believability of this comment, okay? They're fighting to abolish things like the sentencing cap, gender discrimination in the form of predominant aggressor policy to have it be called rape when they get raped by a woman as opposed to the sexual assault misconduct charges that get applied to women, resulting in certain sexual crime policies only applying to males in the context of prosecution. They are demanding alimony reform, the abolishment of default female custody rulings in family court, also to have people prosecuted for offering false testimony in court cases. This is also in regards to things like premarital sex laws in places like India and in opposition to things like affirmative consent, where a sexual partner is under no obligation to notify their partner that they've revoked consent. Even what I... Then he starts talking about trouser snakes. Thanks for being one of the good Scots folk backhanded compliment and building such a nice straw man though i'm glad to know that even though you refuse to espouse and whatever differentiations are between you and the dwork siders you're willing to call out the people opposed to the bad scots folk and the other bad scots folk examine your argument a little bit further as an anti-feminist who follows you regularly i'd hate to see you hurt yourself with that horseshoe first of all these are not across the board things. Remember what I was saying about states' rights versus versus federal rights? Um, the sentencing gap. The men's rights movement and the anti-feminists do not own the complaints about the sentencing gap. The, f the first ever feminists at the Seneca Falls Convention 
in their declaration uh, that kicked off the whole thing, kicked off the whole idea of a woman's right to vote, talked about the gap in criminal prosecutions that women were seen as unaccountable under the law if they committed a crime with their husbands. So you guys don't get to own that. That was the first wave feminists that brought that up way back before the anti-feminist movement got started in the 1970s. You can go look up the Declaration of Sentiments from the Seneca Falls Convention. It is right there. Don't take my word for it. Look this up. To have it be called rape when they get raped by a woman as opposed to the sexual assault misconduct charges that get applied to women. It's not called rape in the courts when a man gets charged with it. It's called first, second, or third degree sexual assault or sexual misconduct. So I'm not sure I understand this. This is the word argument, again, that there's bigger fish to fry. Yeah, can man be, can be raped by a woman? Absolutely. The laws have changed thanks to second and third wave feminism to take it from, at, at one point legally, a man could not be raped by a woman. But feminists work to get the definition of rape broadened so that things that did not involve violent penetration, meaning you get someone drunk and so they can't fight back, things like that, uh, inappropriate touching, rape with a foreign object, all those things could now get classified as rape. So again, your understanding of history is missing. And I'm sure people believe very strongly Kitten, um, in the fact that feminists are opposed to this. And I'm sure some outrage warriors are. I'm sure some people are all about men can't get raped by a woman. I have heard this argue that they call it forced to penetrate, which is a colloquial term, not a legal one. If a man is a victim of sexual assault in the courts, it's called sexual assault. If a woman is sexually assaulted, according to the courts, it's sexual assault. It's the same charge. Certain sexual crime policies only applying to males in the context of prosecution. Rape shield laws only apply to males? I don't know where this person lives, but where I live, no. Rape shield laws are applied to victims, period, unless they decide to, to give that up. They are demanding alimony reform. Okay, where I live, we don't have, we don't have mandatory alimony. We don't. We have child support, but that's not the same thing. Child support is to support your children. And alimony is to support your spouse. Some jurisdictions like California do have alimony, but California is a winner-take-all divorce state. The, the problems with California divorce go way beyond a gendered thing. There are conservative divorce laws that want to force people to stay married. That is not in favor of the woman. That's in favor of the the continuing the marriage. The abolishment of default female custody rulings in family courts. Again, I don't know what jurisdiction you're in, but here in Ontario, it is not default female custody rulings. It is status quo custody rulings. So whoever stayed home the most with the kids, whoever was the primary caregiver gets the children. It is called status quo. And if that happened to be the mother, well, then it's going to be the mother. But if that happened to be the father, then it is the father. It is not default female custody here. So unless you start providing me examples of which jurisdictions are still female custody rulings. Now, this was an element of the opposition among second wave feminists to the Equal Rights Amendment. And some feminists thought they would lose the employment and family law protections that they had fought for piecemeal if the ERA went through. And so the ERA stalled because certain, we'll say regressive feminists in that regard, and the people who opposed the, the women's movement during the second wave got together and, and managed to stall it. They had the number of states and then, well, almost did, and then they lost it. And it's still in limbo. But if the ERA went through, then all of that 
you know, assuming the mother stuff that that is, I guess, a hangover from that would disappear because it's equal rights under the law. Now, I think that has been eroded somewhat piecemeal. I know it has here. But again, I'm in Canada, so we don't have the same amendments to the Constitution deal. We have the Human Rights Commission, which is a different gong show. But, you know, we're not dealing with a stalled equal rights amendment here. And so you you can't say that all across the Western world, this is an issue. You have to cite specifically where it's happening so we can discuss that specific thing because it's not true across the board. It's, it is true that the attempt to defund Planned Parenthood and overturn Roe v. Wade is being fought at the federal level in the United States. That, that is a fact. So that we can say across the board, that's a scary, scary battle just because it is fighting a Supreme Court ruling. And like I said, the fact that there is a greater consistent push to overturn Roe v. Wade than overturn Citizens United, I think just that comparison should be cause for concern. No matter what you feel about Roe v. Wade, Citizens United has caused far greater long lasting and reaching damage to to the American political system. And the kittens are nursing right now. <laughs> premarital sex laws and things like that again, premarital sex laws in places like India, that's a that's a feminist issue. That I, I don't know what what, what you're claiming, this is an, an MRA thing. This is a well-documented thing that feminists are fighting. And in opposition to things like affirmative consent, um, affirmative consent is, yes, it's growing, but this is something, again, that is not a legal principle. This is something that's going on on college campuses. And again, College campuses are not the mainstream. It's not the rest of the world. It's a bubble. It's colleges. And there are a lot of feminists that are, are concerned about the things that are going on on college campuses. They're just not part of the academic structure because the academic structure doesn't really reach that many people. They're out, you know, in the world. That is a college campus thing because college campuses are taking it on themselves to prosecute and allegedly resolve these cases and they're making a hash of it. And this is me on the record saying that. You can never deny someone due process to take care of another ill of society. It's just, you're, you're not making anything any better. In fact, you're making it worse. Because once you start clawing back due process, then it's very hard to put that genie back in the bottle. This, I, this isn't something that there is consensus about across the feminist movement. There are various opinions about this, and I am someone telling you right now, as a feminist, I I think affirmative consent is the wrong way to go. I understand the thinking behind it. And I think it's a good, I think it's good street proofing. Hello, Miss Rosie. Kitten break. Kitten! Um, I think it's good street proofing to teach, especially young men, that unless you're hearing net, yes, take it as a no. It's good street proofing. But in terms of a guiding principle, I don't think so. I'm not, I have a grave concerns about a person, notice I said person, who is sexually assaulted needing a court to, to validate what happened to them. Because there are people who are physically assaulted that can't get... Um, justice. We know there are wider spread issues with criminal justice that go beyond this. And no matter what a court decides, ideally, if somebody does something wrong, they should be punished. But we live in a system of innocent until proven guilty for a reason. Hello, Miss Rosie, Mama. Um, and no matter what the outcome there need to be supports 
for people who have gone through bad things. And you can't, you can't place your sense of self on a court outcome because courts are a roll of the dice. You, you never know what a judge is going to rule. Judges make mistakes and judges have biases. And it's, uh, th that's a much greater issue. But short version is, if affirmative consent is the hill you're going to die on, I, I think that's part of this sort of regressive, political correct, larger thing that we're going through right now. Kitten. That, oh, sorry, sweetie. Um, that cooler heads will eventually prevail on that one. But again, if you're going to give the people pushing that stuff power, as opposed to very strong women like Ash Shao, who are fighting these foolish things, well, you're going to give them power and you're going to give momentum to the side that you claim to oppose. I'll skip the thing about pounding town on the trouser snake and me being good Scots folk. Um, again, this would have been a great comment had you not insulted me multiple times at the end. So for next time, you've now had one. I've addressed this. I'm going to keep this username in mind. And if you do this again and you, you do this garbage about... I'd hate you to hurt yourself with that horseshoe and all that stuff. I will not respond in future. Have I made myself clear? Okay, because we have spent way too long on this one video, and I am not even touching the Trump Alicia Machado video. I'm glad that a lot more people commented on the Pepe thing than the Trump thing, because I got comments saying, what's the big deal about calling a woman fat? If you... S I I'm assuming that's just a troll because I can't believe I know the people who watch this channel are intelligent people. And I cannot believe that anybody is actually that ignorant. But guys, we have a good thing going here with these comments. And this nonsense that there are certain topics that the disagreement stops being respectful and starts getting into personal attacks and insults? No, no, no. No, no, no. That, those are regressive tactics. I don't care what you stand for. Those are not acceptable. I don't like them when feminist sites do that. I don't like it when anti-feminist sites do it. If you've got a solid argument, play to that argument. You think you have the moral high ground? You shouldn't have to result to those tactics. You should have a strong enough argument that you can bring to the table and argue the facts instead of resulting, resorting to name calling and logical, and lo you're resorting to the fallacy fallacy with this straw man stuff. It's, you are creating a fallacy by calling out a fallacy that does not exist. And it's weak. It's weak. You don't have to agree with me, but I expect you to bring a better argument to the table. Have I made myself clear? All right, because I'm really tired of this. And I'm not going to stop doing this content. You're not going to shout me down. You're not going to bully me into submission. You picked the wrong girl for that. And this is unpleasant. I don't like it. There's a reason I keep showing kittens. Because this is foolish. You guys are better than this. And if you really want a better gaming community where well, we can talk about these issues without it turning into a garbage fire, you'll cut that out. Because civility and fair dialogue begin with you. And go do that crap on 4chan. Go do that crap on 8chan. Go do that stuff amongst your friends. That's fine. But we don't do that here. We don't attack the person instead of attacking the issue. Again, you're better than that. Kitten. Where's the kitten? There. Kitten. One more kitten. Oh, Charlie. Oh, sorry, Charlie. Charlie's got issues. Kitten. Kitten. Look how cute. Look how cute. Look at his tummy. And look at his toes.
Yeah, kitten.